1501 students, welcome to this platform whose purpose is to give you feedback on assessment two. My name is Mrs. Sibondi Lemayhen, and my contact details are there on the screen. You can either call me on 012-429-2272 or email me at emayhensj at unisa. Dot AC dot ZA, should you have any uh, content related queries. Now, your assessment too was, um, according to myself, simple and straightforward, uh, but there were some students who experienced some difficulties. Question one, we'll start with question one. Question one, you had to read a statement and then write what phrase was defined in that statement. And what I have done here is I've just given you the answers and directed you to the correct um, page in your study guide. Like for instance, the first one, um, the answer there would be imagined mathematics and P2 refers to page two of your study guide. And it, it goes like that with the rest of the answers up to number 10. Right. And then question number two, you were instructed to construct how learning takes place during the stages of development according to PRJ and that counted for 15 marks. Now students, can I point something out here, something that's very important and some students tend to overlook. Before you answer any question, you need to look at the mark allocation. If the mark allocation is 15, as in our example here in question 2.1, then you know you have um, a lot of writing to do. You can't just give simple one word answers. For instance, if you look at question 2.1, you will see that it's, it's long. It says, construct how learning takes place during the stages of development according to PRJ. Now, the first thing that you needed to do was to mention the, the stage, like the first one being the sensory motor stage, and then you get a mark for that. And then you say what that stage is from, from birth to age about to about age two, another mark. And then you start explaining what happens during that stage. And as you can see, for every point that you wrote, you get you get a mark, and then you move on to the second stage. Same uh, structure um, happens here. You name the stage and you say what when it is from, and um, where it ends, and then you explain exactly what happens during that stage. Right. There's the third one, concrete operational. Same thing and um, the final one, the formal operational. Right, and then at the bottom there, you see I have um, also pointed you in the right direction of where you can find the answers, which would be on pages five, six, and seven of your study guide. Right, question 2.2, .2. you had a case study that um, was presented to you, you had to read it and then answer the questions that follow. Even here, you can see the mark allocation is 15, so you need to think um, think uh, through your answers and know that you can't just give one word answers. So in the first question after you have read the case study was, you had to identify any five mathematical concepts that could be developed from the playground activities. And it was five marks and you had to identify five concepts, which means it was one mark um, per concept. Now, all these concepts would be found in um, your heading number concepts that would be on pages three, five, 10, and 20 on your study guide. And then we give you um, all the concepts that um, could be developed from the playground activities here. And so 
you would have been given a mark for any of the relevant concepts, any five of the relevant concepts that you give, you've been um, given. Now, question 2.2 still links to question 2.2.1. How will you interpret the mathematical concepts the very um, same concepts that you um, you identified from the case study. How would you interpret them um, in order to contribute towards logical thinking in emergent mathematics? There was um, 10 marks, meaning you have five concepts. And um, if you explain how you interpret them to so that they contribute towards logical thinking, you get two marks per, um, per concept and interpretation. For instance, I'll take the first one here, counting. And the inter so counting is the mathematical concept and your interpretation would be something like being able to place uh, building blocks for each member group counting the number of skipping ropes they have to jump, for example, being able to count backwards. There are five balls in the box. To me, take out one, how many are left? That's the interpretation. And you go along um, with the rest of the concepts that you had identified. Right, question three. Explain the following concept in your own words. You had to explain in your own words, your own words here is um, the most important part of this instruction. Students tend to um, take answers straight from the um, study guide without using their own words, then that um, amounts to plagiarism. So we always encourage students to to use their own words to show comprehension and understanding of the concept. So the first one was classification and um, road or parrot counting. Now they each um, contributed two marks for each um, explanation. And these two words are to be found on page 11. Now, I have given you the study guide response, but you had to play around with your words. And um, I would like to thank those students who, um, who made the point of not taking the answers as they were from the study guide, but rather um, using their own words. So there's the definition of classification and then the definition of um, root or parrot counting. And again, you look at the mark allocation before you give your answers. Right, question 3.2. When exposing learners to many kinds of learning experiences where you help them to develop their thinking about what makes a pattern, you must show and explain patterns to them. Now you had to name one way that you can you, you could use to show um, patterns to your learners. Remember, we talking about grade R learners here. They still learn in a concrete way. You can't just tell them. You have to actually show them. You have to show them uh, in concrete activity. Um, you would teach them patterns. This information is on page 51 of the study guide. What you could do, you could show uh, your learners patterns using uh, concrete objects like that are found in your classroom. Like you could use uh, red circles, yellow circles, green circles, etc. that could be found in charts and posters from um, the classroom. And you could also observe uh, patterns in nature. For instance, if you cut up an orange, you'll see that it has a, a, a certain pattern to it, you can show them cultural um, patterns in, from cultural fabrics and such, or um, man-made patterns like brick walls or windows in the classroom, right? And you could also use um, 
patterns in uh, movement, like when they say rhymes, right? Question 3.3. Most children are interested in nature and enjoy investigating their surroundings. Classify four patterns that children can identify around them and illustrate these. So illustrating students means you have to draw pictures. You have to draw pictures of what you are talking about. Uh, for instance, when you're talking about man-made patterns, so you will say man-made patterns, and then your example, let us say it's tiles or bricks. You can you have to actually draw the pattern so that um, I could see it. Animal related patterns, uh, zebra stripes, uh, butterflies, cultural patterns that can be found in beadwork, um, especially of the Ndebele or the Kosa tribes. Geometric patterns, you can have um, like on picture frames, maybe the uh, rectangular or square, and then number patterns. So here, the mark allocation was 16, so it was four per one um, pattern that you discussed and illustrated. Right. Question 3.4, analyze the importance of patterns in emergent mathematics. That information was to be found on page 50 and 51. And then there's the explanation there, and you also had to use your own words in trying to answer this question. Right. Question four. When teaching the concept of symmetry, what activities will you include to help learners who have difficulties understanding the concept? Symmetry can be a difficult um, concept for young learners to understand, especially those learners that have not learned to cross the midline. Um, so you, you have to uh, show them and include pictures. So the first thing you as the teacher have to understand the concept of symmetry first before you can um, teach it to young learners. You can, uh, symmetry can be found in many objects, including natural and as well as man-made, because symmetry, as you know, just refers to a mirror image. What um, is on the right of the picture is repeated on the left side of the picture, like a human face is, is symmetrical. You have, if you put, if you draw a line in the middle of your face, right, down your nose, what um, features are on the right of your face will be repeated on the left of your face, right? They, I give you examples of how you can um, teach symmetry to young learners. Question 4.2. Learners in the early years um, must have the opportunity to explore, discover, describe, and construct with 3D shapes. Here you had to briefly demonstrate the aspects of teaching three-dimensional shapes. You had to use pictures, illustrations, photos, anything to support your answer. Now, when you um, draw your own pictures, it's easy, it's simple and straightforward. But once you um, you Google photos on, um, you, you find Googles on the, you Google photos on the internet, then you have to make sure that you, you cite your sources at the end of the assessment. Now you can take your learners on a shape walk, for example, you explore the shapes and objects around, you discuss their properties, how they look like. Is it a box or a ball? Can it slide or does it roll, etc.? And that information is to be found on page 78 to 81 of the study guide. Right. And then we come to uh, our final question of the assessment. 
you had to distinguish um, the purpose of teaching direction and position in the early years. The first thing that had to be um, explained here in your in your answer, first you had to define what you mean by a direction and also define what you mean by position before you could um, continue with the answer and, and tell what the purpose of teaching both these concepts of um, direction and position are in the early years. And you also had to, um, to look at the mark allocation and there it is five. So before you answer your, um, your questions, you always absolutely have to check the mark allocation so that you don't lose marks. And I've um, heard from some of you, you with your queries that you don't think you got the mark that you deserve. And I had to point out to you that if you give a short answer that does not deserve five marks, then you will get half a mark and that's how um, the calculations are done. Yeah, that is the end of the feedback on assessment two. And I would like to wish you all of the very best for the rest of the assessments that you still have to do. And I thank you very much. But before I let you go, I would like to explain that um, how assessment one the quiz works. Assessment one does not even come to me as a lecturer for marking. It is marked by uh, the computer. As you have seen doing your own assessment one on Moodle, it gets marked right away and you get your feedback right away. So for students to come back three weeks later to say I did not complete my assessment one, could you please open the, the portal so I can submit that it, that's not how things work. Please always make sure that you do your assessments and you submit long before the due date because you want to avoid technical glitches like um, load shedding and the system being down and all that. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to marking your assessment three, four, and five. Thank you.